My name is Hallie Budenhagen, and I'm 18 years old. This is my grampy, Earl Budenhagen. On October 10th of 2012, I thought it was gonna be just like every other day. Little did I know my life would change forever. My grampy suffered a traumatic brain injury on that day. Now, there may be some of you out there who don't know what a traumatic brain injury is, how tragic it can be, or how much it can emotionally impact a family. I've decided to create a documentary showing you what it was like through my eyes. This is my story. My grampy had been a part of my life pretty much since the day that I was born. He loved sports. Like, he, he always used to watch basketball, baseball, football. He was really silly. He liked to make jokes. He was goofy. His, his jokes were so corny, though. <laughs> but it was just like, it was, it was just his kind of humor. Like, it was just him, so it made you laugh. Me, my brother, and my three cousins, we were all the grandkids. We spent a ton of time together. During the summertime, we would um, have this day where we would just spend the whole day with them. They would take us to the Solon um, Rec Center because there was an indoor and an outdoor pool. They would order a pizza and then we would go to the park and then we'd eat our pizza and we'd play on the playground and then we'd come back to their house and we'd sleep over. Other than just doing things with um, my cousins, like there were t things that we also did with just my family. When I was younger, we used to go up to Canada and sometimes Niagara Falls. We had these two little cottages by the lake and he had a really big boat that you could even, you could just take out um, out in the lake and cause he really liked fishing. Gosh, we did, we did so much together. It was like New Year's, Super Bowl, um, 4th of July, Labor Day, birthdays, Thanksgiving, like I, I could just go on and on about all of the memories that I have. But the greatest memory that I do have um, was Christmas Eve. Look at you kids, so big. What is it? Here, put that, put that oh, you tear it open! Oh, 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 it was me, my brother, my parents, my aunt and my uncle, and my three cousins, and we would all get together at my Grammy and Grampy's house. I remember I would just stare at the clock, just like waiting for the time to come, like just wishing that it would go faster. We would all like sit around the tree and just look at like all the gifts. We were just like itching to open them and we'd always eat dinner before. It was just a really great time for all of us and I, I, I really looked forward to it every year. I, I, I came and put into words like how incredible of a man he was. He was just, he was one of a kind and, and we loved him to death. My grampy was a mason. So he um, bricked houses, he bricked building, he did a lot of like construction work and occasionally my dad would um, come out and help him with certain jobs. It was a Wednesday, October 10th. My grampy had to work on this building and my dad was gonna help him too. It was a rainy day, so like, my grampy called my dad and was like, oh, you know, the weather's kind of bad, let's, let's hold off till Friday. My dad was under the impression that 
they were gonna wait till Friday, but my grampy went up there anyway. So he was climbing up the ladder and he was up pretty high and he forgot to lock it and it just kind of like jolted and he fell off and hit his head. My dad got the call. He just just rushed out the door. He just, you know, he had to go see what was happening. When my Grammy and my dad got there, they said that it was a traumatic brain injury. He broke all his facial bones, he broke his clavicle, his ribs, and a few of his fingers. And like, as if it could get like any worse, like, October 10th was his birthday. I found out about it through my mom. I was home alone with my brother. I got a call from my mom and she told me what was going on. And the way that she worded it to me made it seem like it, it wasn't that bad. Like, the way she told it to me on the phone, she was like, oh, you know, Grampy fell and he hit his head. Oh, I hope he's okay. To me, that sort of sounded like he was it was just like a minor kind of injury, maybe like he had a concussion and you know, he was he was gonna get better, like everything was gonna be okay. It wasn't until I got the second call from my mom saying that he had to go into emergency surgery. I asked her like, is everything gonna be okay? And she's like, I'm not really sure. <laughs> It's like when I knew that it was like really bad. <laughs> After the surgery, he had slipped into a coma. We were just itching for him to like move his toes or to like slightly move his fingers. It was like just just little like movements like that just just meant so much. During that time, I was actually the first grandkid to go and see him. I, I truly, I truly did not know what to expect. I walked in and I saw him lying there. Part of his head was shaved from the surgery. He was hooked up to this heart rate monitor. I just, I just felt like my stomach, like, just drop. It was just seeing him like that. It was, it was so hard to comprehend. It was like, it, it didn't look anything like him. After a while, I asked for some time alone with him. I remember just telling him that I'm like, I, I believe in you and I think that you can pull through this and that you're strong enough to get through this. After my grampy had woken up from the coma, he had many different complications during his treatment. He was given a trach, which is something that you put like through the neck and you put it in the windpipe so that you're able to breathe. He was also given a feeding tube so that he had some way to eat. He suffered with C. diff, blood clots, seizures. We visited him periodically. It took everything I had in me to do it. It took every ounce of my being to go see him in the condition that he was in. 
me being so young, it's at that time it was so hard to go see him like that, to go see him in the state that he was in, because it was like, this is my grampy, like, it, I couldn't, I couldn't process that it was really happening to him. I'd ask myself, like, why? Why would such an incredible man like him have to go through something so tragic? What did he do to deserve this? Everything that was going on was taking a huge toll on my family. My dad and my uncle, that's their dad. And my dad would go visit him every day. He'd come home always so tired or so stressed or just so down. Everybody was down. My Grammy, she was so beside herself with the whole situation. It was so hard for her to think about and talk about. The holidays sucked so bad that year. That was the first Christmas Eve that he wasn't there. We tried to, you know, make the most of it and just try to enjoy ourselves, but deep down we, we all knew that like, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't good. There was one person that just really needed to be there. All I could think about was how badly I wanted him there, how badly I just wanted to go to Grammy and Grammy's house and all spend time together and, you know, just my favorite memory. So, yeah, it was just, it sucked really bad. He didn't stay at facilities for long periods of time, and the reason behind that was the insurance. He was transferring everywhere. It was like he was at this nursing home and then he went to this hospital and then he went back to that nursing home and then he's at a new hospital or a new nursing home. Like he, he just went everywhere. Basically, the insurance was determining his recovery rather than like my grampy recovering. How long he stayed at a facility was determined by his progress. If he was at a facility for a certain time and he wasn't really showing any progress, they wouldn't extend his stay. And what made this so frustrating was like, it's a traumatic brain injury. Like you can't determine when they're gonna recover. It, it's like recovery doesn't happen overnight. This caused a great amount of stress to my Grammy. She had to fight so hard just to get more time in rehab. There needs to be more help for families that are going through things like this, whether it's social workers or insurance people. It's like nobody should have to go through that ever. Like, how can, how can you put someone through that? The last time that I visited my grampy, um, it was with my whole family. And I remember walking back to the car with my mom and she was like, Grampy's really not in good shape right now. I know that things weren't good and um, 
at that point, I just, I really didn't know what was coming next. day of my life. <laughs> he had a stroke and the day that we found out was September 11th, which is kind of interesting. It's not fair because it was like a few days before he was at home and now suddenly it's like we're watching him die. <laughs> we get up to the room and he was laying there and my my uncle was there and my dad and my Grammy and I gave him all a hug. I went to give my Grammy a hug and she was like crying into my shoulder. And then she told me, she's like, we're gonna lose Grampy. <laughs> and then I like didn't stop crying the whole rest of the night. <laughs> I had never felt so sad before. I, I like, I felt like a part of me was like dying with him. We were all sleeping in the waiting room. We stayed there overnight. And then the adults, they just wanted the kids to go home because they just didn't want us to see what was happening. You know, we were just all together and yeah, and then they came home um, late in the evening and then they told us that he passed away and it was actually my little cousin Quinn's birthday when he died. So it's just so, it's just so crazy, like all the dates with everything, it was like the accident happened on my grandpa's birthday and then we found out he was dying on September 11th and then on the 12th. It was my little cousin Quinn's birthday and he died. <laughs> it's just... That was literally the worst day of my life. miss him. Um, I miss him every day and we all do. I know my Grammy still to this day can barely talk about it. My dad is still, you know, struggling. All the grandkids, we miss him so much. It, it's so hard to like think of a positive sort of like outcome of this but I guess what it is is we're learning to live without I mean we're doing it it's been two years and we're still 
you know, we're still here, we're still living, we're, we're managing to do it. We keep him in memory with everything. I actually have um, this bracelet and it's got a four leaf clover on it and it symbolizes him because whenever we were outside or um, at the park or anything, he would always spot a four leaf clover in the grass. So it's like I have a part of him with me every day. Sunflowers were his favorite flower. I always, you know, think of him whenever I see those. Just keeping him alive in memory is, you know, our way of um, coping. It can still be really hard sometimes, but at the same time, it's like I am so thankful for all the memories that I have with him, and I am so thankful that I had a grandpa like him. It's been a long day without you, my friend, and I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come along. We're not fully there as far as being okay, but there's still hope.